Should we depend on the cup disk ratio? Some people still depend on the cup disk ratio, but others say we should abandon using the cup disk ratio altogether. This is the famous classification of the cup disk ratio back in 1971 by Armalli and was comparing the size of the cup compared to the size of the disk and you are all familiar with this. Actually we should abandon using this. Simply these two diagrams they get the same size of the cup and the same size of the disk but this one the cup is central and this is a healthy disk while this cup is eccentric and this is abnormal. Again, we may have a large size disc and normal large size disc get a large cup and a small size disc get a small or no cup. So you may say I get a cup disc ratio 0.3 but in a small disc and this could be pathological while it can be 0.6 in a large disc and this can be physiological. So the cup disc ratio does not take in consideration the size of the disc, and it's better not to use the cup disc ratio. And instead, it is suggested that we use the rim disc ratio. This is the ratio between the disc and the neural rim. If in this meridia we'll say the disc is one, so this is half of the diameter, then we'll say this neural tissue is 0.3 and this cup in this meridia is 0.2. So the disc rim ratio on this meridia, on this side, is 0.3. In this example, this is 1, this is 0.5, and the neural tissue here is 0.15. So I will say that the neural rim in this segment is 0.15. In this meridia, I will say that the neural segment is 0.25 or 0.3. And in the opposite, I can say it's 0.2, for example. So in this area, the rim disk ratio is 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0. And we can make such a drawing. We can draw the neural rim all around, and you can choose certain locations and start to write the thickness of the neural rim on this segment. Let's have it here. This is the limit of the disc inside the parapapillary atrophy. This is the center. So we may say that the neural tissue here this is the inside the parapapillary atrophy. This is the limit of the cuff. So I would say that this is the neural rim here of the thickness and in this meridia and in this meridia. We need to measure the size of the disc. You can do this on a slit lamp. If you get the beam of the slit should be widened to be to cover one third of the width of the disc then we start to elongate this beam to cover the disc from the upper limit to the lower limit then we get a correcting factor depending on the lens we are using 
These are the correcting factors for the Volk lenses. If you are using the Volk 90, you should multiply this measurement by 1.33. A T 